The story of human evolution is a long and fascinating one. Early hominids such as the Australopithecus evolved around 4 million years ago. They stood about 1.4 meters tall and had brains 35% the size of ours. It is believed that the Australopithecus is the common ancestor of the genus Homo, which of course includes us, Homo sapiens, along with other now extinct human species such as Homo habilis, Homo erectus and Neanderthals. We've come a long way since our primate ancestors. From standing upright on two feet, the loss of body hair, development of complex language and greatly enlarged brains, our evolutionary adaptions have allowed us to take over the globe as the dominant species. In this video, we are going to look at just one of these changes, bipedalism, how we evolved to walk on two feet. There is some debate over which was the first bipedal hominid. The Sahelanthropus, Ororin, and Ardipithecus all show evidence of walking on two feet as far back as six million years ago. But by the time Australopithecus came along, walking upright was the primary mode of travel. But why exactly did this change occur? Why did our ancestors come down from the trees and how exactly has this changed our bodies? Let's find out. There are several different theories as to why we evolved to walk on two feet, and it's likely that a combination of different factors contributed to this change, rather than there being just a single cause. The provisioning model proposed by Owen Lovejoy suggests that bipedalism was a main adaption for pair bonding between males and females. Females would mate exclusively with the provisioning male, meaning the other males would no longer need to fight with each other over the females. The male would provide food for the females, carrying more by walking upright, whilst the females looked after their young. As revealed by fossil evidence, this theory is supported by the size reduction of the male's canine teeth and body size compared with the females, which is typical of a monogamous species. Due to changes in the climate, our environment was changing from the African forests into open savanna grasslands. As our environment changed, our food supply would have become more widely dispersed, requiring us to travel more distance to gather resources. Recent studies have been done on chimpanzees to determine whether bipedal movement is more energy efficient than quadrupedal or knuckle dragging. The results have shown that for chimpanzees, bipedal and quadrupedal motion requires similar metabolic energy expenditure. A modern human, in comparison, uses approximately 75% less energy when walking compared with chimpanzees. This suggests that the shift to bipedalism would not have been too difficult and supports other theories such as provisioning. The savanna based theory was one of the original models to explain bipedalism. Due to the changes in the environment, not only did our ancestors have to travel further for food, but also needed to see over the tall grasses to be aware of predators. This theory, however, has fallen out of favour in recent years as more fossil evidence has been discovered, showing that the early bipedal hominids were still adapted to climbing trees which indicates that bipedalism likely evolved in trees. Also, early hominids such as the famous Australopithecus fossil known as Lucy would have been much shorter than we are today, so looking for predators in the tall grasses would have proven quite difficult. If bipedalism did evolve in trees, then the postural feeding hypothesis might explain why. Anthropologist Kevin Hunt suggests that bipedal movements may have evolved into regular habits as they were convenient for gathering hard-to-reach food. This could explain why early hominids such as Ororine tunganesis were only partially bipedal. The thermoregulatory model proposed by Peter Wheeler argues that bipedalism would have helped us to keep cool in the hot climate of Africa. This is because bipedalism reduces the amount of body surface exposed to the sun and also raises the body away from the hot ground. Standing up also exposes the body to greater wind flows, helping us to keep cool. It's likely that the thermoregulatory model explains why we became increasingly bipedal over time, rather than how bipedalism first developed. It's possible that all these different theories have some truth in them, what we do know for sure is just how our bodies have changed over time and the price we now pay for walking upright. When you compare a Homo sapiens skeleton with an ape's, it's easy to spot the differences. 
The human thigh bone is both longer and angles inwards so that the knees are kept close together and under our centre of gravity. This allows us to stand for long periods without getting tired, whereas apes can only stand for short periods. Our knees are enlarged and the pelvis is broader and more bowl shaped so that they can withstand our body weight. Rather than being slightly curved, the human spine is S-shaped, helping to support our head and balance our weight directly over our hips. Even though these evolutionary adaptions have occurred over millions of years, we still suffer from the effects of these changes today. Our S-shaped spines, although great for keeping our balance, have to bear the weight of our bodies. This is why millions of people suffer from back injuries, with 80% of Americans experiencing back problems at some point during their lifetime. Our knees are another common area of complaint, particularly for women as their wider pelvis means more force is put on the knee joints. These are just some of the evolutionary compromises we pay for standing upright, but they're a small price to pay. Without them, we might never have come down from the trees and taken over the world. Thanks for watching. Did you know humans are the only species to cook their food? Why do we do this? And how did it give us the evolutionary advantage over our ape-like ancestors? Check out Cogito's video to find out, and remember to subscribe whilst you're there. See you next time.